Are you working? What kind of work do you do? Welcome to the Philly EDC Holster Clinic, where Kydex craftsmen from across America and beyond are sending in their holsters for us to give them our honest feedback about what could be better, what could be improved, and what they're doing right. Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to Holster Clinic, episode 15. Uh, it's pretty cool that we've uh, made it this far, and I'm really happy that you guys are still sending in stuff. That's uh, very cool indeed. Today's episode features uh, a piece from Mark Lancaster over at Squared Away Customs. It's a, a little IWB holster for the Glock 19. Uh, before we get to that, this was included in the box which is super excellent, especially considering that there's, uh, I've been seeing news reports that uh, um, they've suspended uh, production over at the uh, Sriracha plant. Uh, this thing's a lot of fun, indeed. A Sriracha carrier. Um, this is not for review, it's just for fun, and we greatly appreciate this. And we're not above uh, bribery uh, at all over here. Um, so here we go, here's the, uh, the holster, it's a Nice little uh, minimalist IWB holster with a clip. Uh, let's go over the good things first. Good things first. There aren't any pointy edges. There's uh, everything's radius very nicely. The uh, finish on it is wow, outstanding. Um, it's like a mirror. And um, the choice of the uh, little uh, hardware finishing uh, is very good indeed. And I really like the way that this angle is matched to the clip. That's a very nice touch. The, uh, the finish is consistent all the way around. The retention is nice and positive. And uh, yeah, it, it's uh, all in all very, very, uh, you know, squared away. A couple small things. Um, I would consider, especially since you're already putting a, you know, a certain amount of effort into the finish, I would address the inner edge a little bit since it is uh, a little sharp. You know, I would just radius the edge a little bit on the uh, interface such that you get like a uh, a little bit more of a, a bevel on that, which just reduces the uh, the sharpness because it, it shows up in a, in a couple spots. Um, the other thing is that uh, I'll show I'll just show you here like this. There's uh, the it wouldn't be that hard to take this block out that you've put here, make it a little bit more triangular, and then create the option for a canted or a straight uh, drop in case that somebody wanted to carry this in a variety of positions. All it takes is just one more hole and a slightly larger spacer, and you can take the clip and uh, change it from cant to straight, uh, more or less. That would be a, uh, a good move. Another move is um, I'd notice that you uh, do appropriately use a nice thick clip and uh, put a rubber washer in there to take some of the stress out of it. However, there are some great options out there right now that are going to save you a ton, a ton of headache in terms of making these clips. Uh, first of all, Index Fasteners carries the, um, the IWB clip designed by Tony over at Multi Holsters, and you can get that in uh, inch and a half and inch and three quarters sizes. Um, and also, DIYholster.com is carrying the, um, a uh, Raven concealment component from their uh, modulator system, that, that uh, thing where you can take the HSGI tacos and weave them together such that they become a uh, belt-mounted solution more conveniently. And they have a <clears throat> big old clip with um, adjustability built into it. And I've, I think if you're committed to using a clip, uh, given the availability of injection molded components, just to save you time and you know uh, give you greater consistency in making the holster, I think that'd be a good option to go to, uh, especially considering that there's probably somebody else out there doing it. And given the availability of those kinds of products, it doesn't cost that much to give yourself an excellent upgrade. Um, yeah, the I didn't really have any uh, issue with this clip as it stands, but I would recommend just uh, saving yourself uh, some time and increasing the uh, consistency of the work to the degree that you know you can get with a, a sourced component, uh, and you know save yourself save yourself the headache of making these guys. Um, <coughs> one other thing, I noticed that the trigger guard on this is completely filled in to the point where the retention on this holster is coming from somewhere else. And I suspect that 
it's coming from the uh, dimples for the takedown lever on the Glock. Now, I can see how this uh, might create uh, something where you perceive the retention as being smoother or maybe less snappy, or that there may be a concern that, oh, well, I don't want anything indenting into the trigger guard because I'm afraid the gun's going to go off. Um, both of those may be slightly misguided. First of all, the um, if you build a dimple into the trigger guard, you can have a slightly wider variation in the amount of definition from holster to holster so, and still uh, retain a level of consistency of retention. That means you don't have to be able to, you know, see all the grooves in the takedown lever in order to get good retention. If you've got, you know, um, a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch dimple around the trigger guard, that's going to give you uh, consistent, really consistent definition, even if you, you know, uh, one sheet of Kydex you take out of the oven at, you know, 329 and the other one you take it out at 335, they're both going to be much more similar. Um, and additionally, um, relying on this small dimple on the side, as the uh, Kydex holster is subject to repeated flex and use, you might find that over a long period of time, not only does that loosen up to a significant degree, but it's also harder to um, retighten or you know adjust back if the customer says, oh, well, it's become loose over a period of time. Well, then you have to heat it up and then rely on this uh, for the retention again. But if you have a, a trigger guard dimple, it's much easier to tune it back up uh, either as the end user or as a customer service uh, uh, issue. Also, the idea that having a deep impression in the trigger guard area may set off the firearm is, um, I can see, I, I've gotten that question a lot and I can see how some folks may look at that and say, oh my God, I can see the trigger, it's gonna set the gun off. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something here and I want you to look very carefully. As you put the gun into the holster, you can see that it spreads open around the trigger guard and then shuts again. Now, this creates a circumstance whereby the Kydex is never actually contacting the trigger. And in order for you to create a holster that causes the gun to fire, you would have to be able to, in A, mold the holster with the trigger in the most rearward position such that in the event that you could put the gun in the holster without causing the holster to open and flex around the trigger guard, uh, you would have to create a situation in which the trigger is already in the fired position for anything to force it um, to the rear and cause the gun to cause the gun to fire. I don't know how much, how, how easy that is to uh, understand based purely on uh, you know, talking about it. But the long and short of it is, as the gun goes in the holster, the holster spreads open and nothing ever like rides the trigger or pushes on the trigger. So we could conceivably make a holster whereby, you know, these two sides of the holster touch each other through the trigger guard and it will never cause the gun to fire. The only thing that will cause the gun to fire is something actively pushing the trigger to the rear. If the holster opens and closes, that doesn't provide a rearward pressure on the trigger and uh, you don't create a circumstance whereby the gun can fire just as a result of the molding of the holster. So in the event that you are blocking this out entirely to avoid such a circumstance, I wouldn't even worry about it. Physics is on your side and nothing's gonna happen. And you can uh, give yourself a uh, a wider range of leeway in terms of um, small variations in molding precision in order to accomplish consistent retention without relying on this extreme level of detail in order to accomplish your uh, retention. I hope that makes a certain amount of sense. All in all, I'd say this is an excellent uh, holster. My recommendations in a nutshell are uh, please do rely on the trigger guard for retention. It's consistent, it's easy, and it gives you a lot of leeway in terms of uh, you know, managing your definition and your heat. Two, um, you're already going to great lengths to get this fit and finish really nice. I would just do a little bit extra and make sure that you sand a little radius onto this edge because it is a little sharp. Pardon me. And three, um, look into uh, possibly 
getting a hold of a more convenient and uh, long-term uh, reliable uh, injection molded clip for this and I think you're gonna have a winner. So uh, thanks again for uh, sending it in. This is from Squared Away Customs, so check them out.